fellas. On today's content, we are effectively wrapping up this godforsaken league with one last build. We'll talk more about ultimatums shenanigans in a future video, but today we are focusing on this chunky spinny boy. This is a fire conversion sweep chieftain, and let me just tell you that this character is kinda funny. Funny in the sense that it just works, and delivers some rather wacky experiences by doing so, as you all see from Sirius on Awakener 8, Cortex, Maven, and Uber Elder. Funnily enough, I had to actually rewrite this intro because originally I had only recorded 45 seconds of the Uber Elder fight, which I wasn't so happy with and after much deliberation I decided to do it again. But my stress was really not that justifiable because this character made that fight roughly last 2 minutes which should give you an idea of how stupid the damage gets. Anyways, coming back to this T-spinning character, I gotta say that I really enjoyed playing with it because it felt amazing all the way. From level 12, once you can equip Sweep, all the way to 94 where I wrap his adventure. Sweep is such an underrated skill and it's rather interesting to me in that sense because I did give the skill a shot in Heist and I recall not liking it one bit. However, this time around, something clicked with it. Granted, I am using some of my old tricks with it, but I'm also stepping out of the comfort zone and building around a rather thick staff, which is a new concept to me because I never use staves. Like, seriously, I think we've done one or two builds that used a staff, but those were casters. This is important because going forward, I think I'll be cramming more staves into my builds. I was not expecting these weapons to be that good, but unlike most melee stuff in the tree, staves have some rather disgusting notables. For example, earning endurance charges on crit, or gaining a crap ton of crit chance and crit multi just for holding a staff, is just too good not to consider ever, especially with the Marauder and Templar who are gonna get the most use out of these anger sticks. Now, sweep as good as it is in this build is not precisely user friendly. It comes with an attack speed penalty, and by all intents and purposes, it is cyclone without moving while spinning. Which is not too bad, but it's also an acquired taste. Granted, the biggest ally that sweep has is area of effect. But for this character's sake, we don't really need to give sweep the same range as the Earth's diameter for its area of effect. Instead, we're gonna speed this one up by cramming a multitude of speed buffs which are gonna help the character delete stuff, as you're probably seeing by the gameplay. But considering the fact that this is my last character for the league, things are gonna get a bit fancy in the gear department. We are using some obscure stuff here and there, but mostly rather thick stuff which can prove a bit difficult to acquire. But with all honesty, this level of investment is actually quite rewarding, mostly if you are here to watch stuff melt before it even moves a finger. Finally, for this intro at least, I like this character because I moved away from my usual build format. We saw this change back with the Flicker Strike Inquisitor and today we are refining those ideas. As in no more exploded chest, no more chain breakers to generate rage and we focus on building an all-around competent character instead of looking to maximize burst damage. You'll see more of this as the video progresses, so before I keep spoiling the fun stuff, hey, if you are new around here, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, otherwise a rating and a comment are always appreciated. And now, let's talk about spinning to win the old clunky way. Alright everyone, it's gear time. The first thing and the backbone of this entire character is a rather thick aggressive stick. An Eller influence staff with as much physical DPS as possible and the level 1 fortify intrinsic support mod. This effectively turns the staff into a 7 link. The higher the fist DPS, the harder this will hit, which in turn will make this even smoother. So try to get something similar to this stick or even better. For the helmet, it is a classic. A crown of the inward eye with ancestral protector grants attack speed while active as the enchantment. But blood rage attack speed is also good if you cannot get something similar. For the body armor is that one astral plate that I've been reusing for a while. It has chance to gain a frenzy on hit, attack crit chance, life resists and a chance to avoid elemental ailments. This last one is important because we are building towards avoiding that crap in this build. The gloves are Tomb Fist with an extra frenzy charge as the corrupted implicit, and we socket a murderous eye with life, crit multi and dexterity. Now, we are using awakened melee physical damage in the GM setup, which is kinda redundant with Tomb Fist. So you can change these gloves for a rare pair with a maximum frenzy charge, melee damage or other useful stuff alongside life and resistances if you want. Coming back to the gear, the boots are double influence to tone boots with life, movement speed, tailwind on crit and elemental element avoidance chance. For enchantments, elemental penetration is really good if you can get it. I am reusing the chunky amulet from my Flicker Inquisitor. It has life, is damage to attacks, crit multi, resistances, attack speed and we benchcraft negative mana cost of skills on it. 
All in all, try to get an attack focused amulet with similar modifiers. Something close to mine isn't particularly necessary, but we also anoint Panopticon to get even more bonus damage when our totems are up, which is mostly for single target but as you've seen so far, it greatly helps in that regard. The first ring has onslaught on hit as the implicit, life, resists, negative mana cost of skills which we need to craft on it, and crit multi from essences of scorn. The other one has flame ability on hit, life, some damage and resists. We also craft even more negative mana cost of skills on it. However, if you cannot find something similar, you can attempt to craft synthesized rings with flame ability on hit as the implicit, or get a ring with the curse and then use Isling on a tier 4 bench to hopefully get life or resistances, which is how I made mine. The belt is Stygian Bias with life, resists and elemental damage with attack skills. The jewel on the belt has life, dexterity and crit multi. Finally, for flasks, a wise oak, a diamond flask and a lion's roar. And that should be it for the gear, which is a bit chunky but since this is my last build for the league I figured that we could invest a bit into it. Granted there is room for improvement but I like where this sits currently so I am in no hurry to min max even further. Having said that remember that Chaos Race is absolutely mandatory nowadays so don't forget about it anywhere and everywhere you can get some. But with all of that said let's talk about the passives. Alright, so this is a level 94 chieftain and we side with Alira for the crit multi and resists. For pantheons, either Solaris or Lunaris as the major goddesses and either Averath or Shakari as the lesser ones. For the ascendancy, Namahu flames advance for the fire conversion and fizzes extra fire, Hinekora deaths fury for the ash against unique enemies and life leech, Ramako sons light for the fire penetration and ignite chance, and finally to Kohama's war herald to further increase the bonuses from the ancestral totems. Now before talking about the skill tree, I leveled this character by using limb split into the cauterizer until I could equip my staff at level 68. This is important because I did not spec into staff notes until I was able to use my staff. So instead I invested plenty of my points into stuff that generally affects the build but was not precisely focused around a single weapon class. And this doesn't apply to you if you are respecting a character instead of leveling from zero to hero. Anyways, our first priority is rushing towards Avatar of Fire. However, before you take Avatar of Fire, make sure that the Mahus node on the Ascendancy has been taken. That way you can convert 100% of the physical damage to fire early on and it's not something that you're pending. On the way to Avatar of Fire, we grab stun immunity, a lot of life, like literally a chunky amount of life, some damage in the Templar area, more life, area of effect, some dexterity stuff, aura reservation and a bit more life. We then come back to the Marauder area and grab more life, dexterity and melee crit. From there we focus on the cluster jewels. The first setup is the important one. We've got a large cluster jewel with 8 passives at most, which comes with prismatic heart, cremator and widespread destruction. We are gonna take 7 points in this jewel. The medium cluster has 5 passives at most with master of fire and cooked alive. However, cremator and master of fire can appear on both medium clusters and large cluster jewels. So if you cannot get something similar to my jewels, feel free to swap their locations and hopefully find something that you can use. They are mandatory though, especially Cremator as that will help us remove corpses on kill and that way we don't have to deal with annoying ass death effects. Anyways, the other large cluster jewel has Calamitous, Graceful Execution and Martial Prowess. But we only take 5 points in this large cluster jewel, so Martial Prowess isn't allocated. From there on out we take some melee damage near the Marauder start and a dexterity node. Once we've got everything else allocated, we can focus on the staff nodes that we've been ignoring. The ones near the Templar starting area that give us crit chance, crit multi, endurance charge generation and some block chance. The ones between Templar and Marauder that give us accuracy, attack speed and some crit chance. The ones between Witch and Templar that give us crit chance and crit multi. And finally the ones near Avatar of Fire that give us crit chance, crit multi and some accuracy. Now for the jewels we use a Watcher's side that gives us attack speed while affected by precision and unfeasas extra fire by using anger. There are other useful mods from these auras that you can mix and match, so don't worry if you cannot get something as close to mine, just make sure that it's double dipping into both auras. The rest of the jewels have increased maximum life, some form of crit multi and either attributes like dexterity and intelligence, or more damage stuff like melee damage, area damage, attack speed, crit chance, etc. 
Having said all of this, some of my jewels have harvest implicit crafts, and specifically elemental element avoidance implicits. By combining multiple of these alongside the body armor and boots, we can become immune to ignite, shock, chill and freeze. And I recommend chasing this as well so that you can avoid that crap completely. But yeah, that is it for the skill tree. It is a bit self-contained, which is great because that means that we don't have to travel as much and everything we take is giving us something back, whether it's life or damage. However, be warned that we need like 140 dexterity in this build, so make sure that your gear and jewels have some dexterity, so that way you can avoid taking any of it in the skill tree. And with all of that said, let's talk about the gem setups. Alright, so in the staff we've got Anomalous Sweep, Combustion, Anomalous Inspiration, Elemental Damage with Attack Skills, Awakened Milifis, and Divergent Multistrike. Now, obviously, Awakened Elemental Damage with Attack Skills is superior, but I completely forgot about it until I started writing my script, so don't sleep on that gem. Anyways, in the body armor, Precision, Anger, Herald of Purity, and Herald of Ash, with all of them linked to Enlightened level 4. And while yes, Blood and Sand is superior to Herald of Ash, it reduces the area of effect for Sweep, which we don't really want, and it's also why I am using double Heralds. But if you don't care that much, feel free to use that gem instead of Herald of Ash. Moving on, in the boots, Phantasmal Ancestral Protector and Blood Rage while having both linked to Enhance level 4. Also, we link multiple totems to the Ancestral Protector so that we can have him and the Warchief at the same time. Talking about the Warchief in the Globes, Ancestral Warchief and Val Haste link to increased duration. This support only affects Val Haste, so don't worry about linking the totem to it. And finally, in the Helmet, I've got Steel Skin and Flame Dash linked to Second Wind. And a Portal Gem. But with all of that said, let's wrap up what is effectively the last build of this Godforsaken League. Yes, I ignored the Ultimatum with it. I mean, the abundance of proximity shields and having to stand still is not gonna be a fun time with this build whatsoever. Which can be said about the mechanic altogether, but then again that is a discussion for another video. This character on the other hand gets my seal of approval every other day of the week. The damage, especially single target, is fucking disgusting. I was checking my gameplay clips and Maven's fight is quite literally 3 minutes long. But that is true if you don't count the loot drop. Sirius, on the other hand, melts under the same time frame, which could have been even faster if his RNG behavior didn't have him cast the clone beam right after casting the spinning crap. So what I'm trying to say is that this character deals quite a bit of damage. His leveling adventure was quite the breeze as well. The leveling went super smooth from using limb split into the cauterizer into the stuff I crafted. The damage never felt lacking, so in that regard this could not have been smoother. Now, personally, I am a big fan of using bridge stones to level from 70 to like 91 or 92, but you know, this crappy ass 3.14 patch made that a bit more difficult to achieve. And this is because bridge stones are not as common as they used to be in the past, and as such, they are a bit more expensive to acquire, which in turn kinda makes it not as worth to use them to level up your character fast. But you know, sometimes it do be like that. Overall, I was pleasantly surprised with Sweep. Again, like I said in the intro, I really like this build because I tried new stuff with it that worked out perfectly fine in the end. Staves are definitely something that I am not gonna sleep on anymore, especially seeing as they are rather obscure choices for melee builds. In the sense that getting something as close to my stuff isn't particularly difficult, but maybe I am a bit biased because RNG didn't screw me as much when crafting this guy. But at the same time, I am also happy about this character because we've effectively moved on from Chainbreaker, Rage and Berserk, also the Explody Chest, to some degree. They were fun to play with for a couple of leagues, and while I am still a bit salty about the changes that these things saw, I can say now that I genuinely don't need them anymore. Character development everyone, or something like that. But yeah, with all of that said, reminder that we'll be tackling some variety gaming soon. And you may ask, how soon? Well, right after the league review. I'll be doing some Battlefield 4 first because I am excited about 2042, and Battlefield 4 is currently rather popular due to the hype for that game, which has been a blast to play recently and I intend on sharing it. So don't be surprised when we go from building characters to playing 64 player operation locker 24-7. But with all of that said, that's gonna be it for me today. Thank you so much for watching tonight's video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, but a rating and a comment are always appreciated. Take care, have a nice weekend, and peace out.